Welcome to Fourth and One. Well, I always got it done. Bringing facts by the time before the rising of the sun. But this ain't me in the shotgun. Huh. Huh. This is me in front of TV having a whole lot of fun. You did. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, before we get started, man, I have some exciting news. So the regular season, that shit over with. Now, this is when a real football starts to count. With that being said, I've partnered with Prize Picks to have Cam's picks presented to you by Prize Picks. I mean, shit, it's the only way to come correct in the playoffs, right? So make sure you stick around to the end to see whose my takes are. You dig? Now, with that being said, viral moment of the week, first down. Let's see what we got. All right. First up, we have Jadavian Clowney. My boy got paid, all right? $7.50. With this sack, yeah, right yeah, here. yeah. We talked about the incentives, bro. Yeah, exactly. Them be going hard, bro. He fit. <laughs> Let's see what he's talking about. So Clowney with that sack, seven hundred fifty thousand dollar bonus. He <laughs> hey, yeah, fifty damn. Well, we got paid, bro. Just, bring me my money. <laughs> so he ain't the he ain't the only one. There's a couple of people that got paid too this oh. weekend. Let's see this next video. Hold on, real quick. We got a. Uh, I want to say Chris Jones, 1.25 with this sack. Come here. And it's Chris Jones. My boy, we go into the pot miss with the. We go into the pot miss. And look at the reaction on that Kansas City sideline. Oh, that's love right yeah, there, the bro. The whole team. That's love. Now take us to roof, Chris. That's love. And then we got Joe Mixon, man. He's the last one. He got 100K on his tutty. He was more chill and relaxed, but still, bring me my money. That's the money dance That's right the there. That's money the money dance. celebration. When you when you down, I'm going straight to the bank with this. Ha, 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 ha. Like, a lot of folks can't, you know what I'm saying, cope with that type of shit. It's almost like hitting the lottery mm -hmm. slick. You know what I'm saying? And you be like, bro, I need that bitch. Yeah. I need that. I need you. <laughs> Ooh, they scratching out. <laughs> what is that? What is that? One point five. Uh, one point two five for Chris Jones. Mm. You got seven hundred and fifty for Jadavian Clowney, mm. and a hundred ball for uh, Mixon. Just one hundred k, but just walking the I right just way. Just say just. Not just. That's what I'm saying. I just I, say just. You're right. Now we ain't gonna. That's some, we that's got that a, big don't one hundred k. Don't, 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 don't look, my. Don't call, don't call my blessing, look. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying. That hundred man. Give that me that hundred bud, bro. Yes, yeah, I that need that man for the walk. Hey, through. congratulations to everybody who hit their incentives. That's it. you need to help to do that. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's good for business. It's good for. For everybody, from the Jadavions to the Joe Mixons. It, I know those were the, wasn't the only three guys, you know what I'm saying, who made or hit their bonuses. But, yeah, it's a different type of time. It's a different type of celebration. Money, 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 hmm? money. Money. Here we go, next clip. All right, so we got uh, Jake Browning saying a familiar statement. Not the same way, but he said, ain't 32 better than me in his own words. So let's see what he had to say. I think I've established that I'm capable of being a starter in the NFL. Um, it's obviously a weird situation where I feel like, hey, I'm, I'm one of the top 32 quarterbacks in the world, and I just so happen to be on a roster with a guy that's proven that he's a top five quarterback in the world. And so, uh, you know, what that, what that looks like going forward, I have no idea, nor do I have any control, so I'm not going to think about it a ton. But uh, I think when I go watch – the uh, all my film to try and figure out what I'm going to work on this off season. I'll be proud of what I put on tape. But the goal was to go to the playoffs, and we didn't. So that's you know pretty motivating going in the off season too. Boy, you bold, boy. He ain't bold. He telling the truth. He can feel how he feel. <laughs> feel me. I feel it. Shout out to Jake. Stand on business. You know what I'm saying? Don't recant that. If you feel how you feel, shit, stand on it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Nobody goes into any situation and wants, wanting to be number two. That's true. You can't fight him for it. You feel me? At one point or at some point of his career, it's probably this point now, he's realizing he belongs. Yeah, I can play this game. Yeah. Not from the sideline. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Tim Jam. But is that putting pressure? You know, he gave Burrow his flowers. Like, you know, you top five, but I am top 32. Is that is that like a little jab for Burrow or just saying, hey, I know some other jobs out there and I'm putting in my application? Yeah. <laughs> Ain't no right or wrong way to say this shit, but it's some terrible quarterbacks that's in the NFL. Because when you say to everybody, oh, Cam, you ain't. I'm bitter. Let them tell it. Uh-huh. You know, I don't got no right to be talking about quarterback play. <laughs> Let them tell it. But the truth of the matter is, bro, it's all about the system. Mm-hmm. It's all about the personnel around you. It's all about your your capabilities to shine bright like a diamond <sighs> and with, with your skill set. <clears throat> and Mr. Browning feels that he should be awarded a starter, starting role mm-hmm. or on somebody's roster. I, I believe he's going to be on somebody's roster. So I don't GM know his Cam. contract situation, but... Yeah, I've I've seen a couple of the games. Very more athletic than I thought he he was. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. So as a GM, you looking for a quarterback in the draft? <sighs> no, no, don't get me wrong. No, I'm not. Hold on, finish your <laughs> finish your statement. You, you the GM? Uh huh. Let's just throw. Uh, what, who are we looking at? Uh, just a team that need a quarterback. Yeah. You drafting or you taking Jake? I'm drafting. Would you bring Jake in though? Still, of course. Best man win. Yes. Seriously. Okay. I, that's my that's my approach anyway. Correct. Like, let me rewind. Let me take a, a step back. I never wanted nothing given to me. Mm-hmm. And for the people who needs more insight, I never succumb to agreeing to be a backup because my only request was let me have an opportunity to have a quarterback battle. Those teams. Just wanted me to go into the situation as the backup to like my yeah. pride or fuck pride. My skill set does not dictate me to be back, easy yeah. with being a backup. You ain't no yellow brick road backup fuck, player. No, I'm, not, I'm not no guy that goes to the fucking game spitting out sunflower seeds <laughs> for four quarters. Not that guy. What's I, the flavor, bro? Barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> but I ain't that dude, bro. Fuck that. I'm, man, I'm in that motherfucker trying to get my damn fabric dirty, baby. Yeah, you feel me? Yeah. I'm talking shit, a lot of it, and can back that shit up. You dig what I'm saying? And that's what you, I think, it's not even as a backup. It's like, I'm not trying to outshine the starter, but I'm going to compete every week. It ain't week. that. It ain't that, bro. It's not trying to outshine nobody. The cream will rise to, to the, the top. top. Every time. Let us compete. Come on. That's all I was wanted. That's all I wanted. You just wanted to trying to do. Let the let, let the reps dictate who's supposed to be the starter or not. Come drafted on, huh? person or not. Shit. So for for Jake, it's the same thing. Whether you draft a guy, I would draft a guy and have him. Like they take the the reps. And with the reps going into camp or during camp, you start saying to yourself, like, okay, cool. Like he's he's making yeah. strides. That cream rising. And it's and it's rising. Yeah. So shit, with that being said, shit, stand on business, Jake. You dig be, what I'm saying? You ain't doing there. nothing wrong. You feel me? But you have to make sure that while you're talking, you ready? You ready? Because <laughs> it's better to be prepared for an opportunity that you do not have, rather than to have an opportunity that you ain't prepared for. That's an Eliante icebox jewel right there that I'm gonna drop on y'all motherfucking heads, and we're gonna go to the next clip. So the Raiders, the Raiders fans chant for Antonio Pierce. Obviously, they let your uh, former coach of yours go, um, and Antonio took over, and the team kind of changed up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so, man, this is what the fans got to say, and this is how they feel about him. Ooh. But that's, that's, that's bold, bro. Like, it's like the standing, oh. Yeah. Like the, like the people have spoken. Of course. And, and, and the Raiders kind of lineage has always been like gritty. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They get it out the mud team. <laughs> you bring a preppy motherfucker in there if you want to. <laughs> that, 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 that ain't coinciding with what we used to. Yeah. When we was back in Oakland. Just because we're in oh. Vegas, that, that 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 same energy, DNA is still in the blood, bro. Correct. So, yeah. So, Antonio, by all means, bro, you deserve to be the head coach officially. And I think the fans want that shit, too. Yeah. So, what else needs to be said? I also spoke on last week's discussion. Everybody ain't capable of being a head coach. Mm-hmm. So, therefore, I think <laughs> coordinators should get paid more. 
mm. head coach salary. You see what I'm saying? And and that'll that'll ease everything. Like if you are able to 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 pay a head coach or pay a, a offensive coordinator head coach salary, do we have Eric uh Behen- B enemy? B enemy. Hold on, say his name. Eric B enemy. Are we able to still have Eric B enemy? Did I say it right? B enemy. B enemy. Yeah. If hold on, say his name. Eric B enemy. If offensive coordinators made the same contract or the money that head coaches made, I think Eric B enemy will still be in Kansas City. Mm, that day. But then, do you think it's gonna be a clash? And like, bro, don't talk to me like we get paid the Cause, same. Because the truth, because the truth of the matter is, he took another job, the same type of job, mm-hmm. in the Commanders. I don't know where there's smoke, there's fire. I don't know if he was happy there. Did he get his just due there? But a lot of a lot of coaches structure is that offensive coordinator has a lot of responsibility, mm-hmm. almost to say he is a head coach in his own right. Now, a lot of head coaches have this narrative that I'm an overseer mm-hmm. with a emphasis on, you know, I, I've played with two or three head coaches, but two of them was predominantly all, uh, defensive minds, mm-hmm. you know, Belichick and uh, Rivera. So they kind of, they, they stood over there. What I'm saying is the offensive coordinator was the head coach for the, the offensive offense. guys. Yeah. So I think that will, will cut it up. I ain't, Writing the checks, so. But they cut. I mean, like, if the team go wrong, the first thing they're going to look at, in most cases, is the head coach. Of like, yeah, bro, what success. are you doing? But I think, all right, give everybody, just like the starting quarterback, right? Mm-hmm. You know how you track his record? Mm-hmm. Track the whole coach's record. All the coaches. Defensive coordinator and offensive coordinator. Did they win? Yes. Okay, boom. As a defensive coordinator, this was his record. Mm-hmm. Offensive coordinator, this was their record. This was their success. See what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. track those things now. Because at one point in time, think about this. A statistic, it, it, it wasn't always a, a statistic. The sack was not a, a, an accounted statistic. You mm-hmm. know, it was just a tackle. Correct. You feel me? Now it's like, yo, you got to go back into the lab in the offseason to say, okay, what are we, how are we enhancing this sport? You enhance it by tracking offensive coordinator success, defensive coordinator success, and things like that, and have it be a real record that you kind of count, not just the head coach's record. Yeah. So, next clip. Man, we got the fight of the century of the year going down. Oh, he ready. Oh, uh, you see the you see the stance yeah, off, yeah, off the yeah. rail. Anytime you see a motherfucker getting that shoulder socket Power, ready. Andy Mama at center ice. Yeah. And they're gonna square off here, sizing each other up. Power 6'3, 207, <laughs> Imama, 6'1, 185, and get here they head. go. Get out my head. With those rapid fire rights really connected. Dude. And Boko answering back. <laughs> Power again. Ooh. There's a big right hand Knocked from Boko. Top oh, that's a and black dude. They yeah. spin along the wall near side. Ooh. Some body Bow. shots from Bauer too. Bro, they uh, let him go, boy. Boko with a couple of bombs Ooh. and another one from Imam. Oh, uppercut. Mm. Another connection from Boko. Oh, yeah. As a oh, oh, oh. Bauer on the wall. They're still mm. throwing punches. They're still going. When did they break this shit up? But they did. Both teams uh, enjoying what they're watching. Oh, another the glove went off. Another glove. Neither of these guys will go down. His face is Your bloody. Discretion is advised. Bauer, 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 come on, man. just filled with blood. It's, um... Was this MMA? Was this fucking? <laughs> Golly, I don't even know what the fuck I just thought. This is like backyard brawl on ice. The who? American Hockey League. Mm. Bruh, they gonna get some ratings after this one. I, I mean, you seeing hockey and boxing, MMA all in one, bro. This is the combo league, bro. I can watch that. I can too. I can watch that. <laughs> but they, it, it, bro, it's so hard keeping your balance and still fighting. But the other guy in the white, the the white jersey, mm-hmm. them them little rabbit jabs, yeah. they ain't hitting shit. Pop, 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 pop. But the dude was bleeding though. Yeah, he was. So both of them caught some blood. But the dude in the black jersey was trying to go some. He was haymaker, like hold it. You know how you try to hold somebody up? Let me line it up. Bah! I never really got into hockey like that. I know it's a northerner mm-hmm. kind of sport. But if I was the coach, <laughs> hey, put them pucks away. Put them sticks away. We gonna we gonna hash it out. Cause shit, we may lose the game, 
but we gonna win the motherfucking war. <laughs> oh man. Listen, listen, shit, everybody, pick your man, Captain. <laughs> Who you got beef with? Who got him, Captain? <laughs> shit, this is about to find out a lot about our team. Because if we know going into this damn match that we can beat your ass, that's half the day. Half the battle. You see what I'm saying? You ain't going to punk us. Exactly. Shit. <laughs> Y'all may have all the damn this and then that and the skill set. Look, bro, I'm going to beat your ass. How about that? You hey, score man. on me, I'm going to whoop your ass. Feel me, so shit. That's just my theory about everything in life. Yeah, next clip. Here we go, second down, questionable calls of the week. Let's see what we got. Man, a lot of stuff been going crazy about Justin Fields not getting, um, like, some of these flags. They just been letting them just get hit. So let's watch. We got two videos. He gave himself up. Yeah. So once, once he starts to slide, if Owens is already going before he shows he's going to slide, Mm. And then Teddy Bruschi has something to say about it. Right here when it comes to Justin Fields and get to the officiating on how these officials look at him. Okay, because I've seen enough of him getting hit when he slides, getting hit uh, illegally when they should be calls. I'm calling, this is what Ebert Blue should have been doing for the last four weeks. It's like, listen, man, you've got a franchise quarterback here, and these mm. guys are teeing off That's on this. They're teeing off on this guy, and these officials think just because he's big, strong, and fast that when he starts to slide, he really doesn't mean it. So I got to slam him down. I got to do things like this because, ref, how am I supposed to bring him down? When are the officials going to give him the respect that he deserves because this can be the future of the league in this guy's face right here in Justin You're talking about respect and you. So he didn't get a single uh, rough in the passer call all this season. What? Yeah. No rough in the passer. But you know, you know something similar like that. I mean, you, you've been dealt like yeah, that. That's too. been the story of my damn life. But I ain't complaining, though. You feel me? <laughs> but the the reality and 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 you know the frustration of things where me speaking open about this, mm -hmm. it's not the hits that's 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 being taken place or the hits that's taking place. It's not you know the helmets or this, that, and the third. What frustrated me mm -hmm. is the same officials or an officiating crew that may have covered my game, that covers other games, that I even put a microscope to, to kind of, they are capable of making these calls. Mm -hmm. What bothered me was they don't look at him as that type of player. Like this defenseless, I need you help. See what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's the frustrating thing. Am I, I felt like I was being punished for my talent. And you know size, yeah. And size. When other quarterbacks give themselves up, it's 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 thrown. Sometimes they wasn't even giving themselves up. It was just an egregious hit. But still, it's like from from my mentality, it's not the hits that's taking place. Mm -hmm. Okay, boom. Take my hit and insert that hit and have it be done to another quarterback. Y'all gonna call it then. That's where I felt that that's not fair. So whether it's Justin Fields, Lamar Jackson, fucking Jared Goff, fucking Brock Parody, Dak Prescott, it don't damn matter. Just keep keep the consistent keep the calls. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. that's really pretty much what it comes down to. Because I don't I don't think I never wanted any favorable calls. But you, it's hard for you not to to feel that way when you see other quarterbacks get those calls that you don't get, and it impacts the game. Yeah, 15 yards in any point of the field is a major but penalty like, implication. But like from your point of view, even after you get hit that type of way or you give yourself up, have you looked at the referee like what's their, bro. they just shrug their shoulders? Do they like, man, come on, can you too Man, big honest to God, bro, somebody <clears throat> thought I was tripping, dog. Bro, a referee told me I ain't old enough to get that call yet. He told you you're not old enough? I swear to beans, bro. On everything I love. And during the game. Like, come on, game. You know you ain't old enough to get that call. I said, wait, what? And what year was this then, though? Like this you... was like my second year. I said, what? Now I got to be old enough? You see what I'm saying? But goes back to, like, bro, we got to keep hope. Like, 2024, we holding everybody accountable, bro. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to hold a person accountable if they're a contractor. And a referee is a contractor. That's not a full-time job. We've already spoke about that last week. But for us... As players, we should feel protected at all costs. If you saying that you're making the game safer, like bro, that ain't. I don't feel safe playing this damn game. Yeah, 
Like the person who was supposed to be protecting me ain't protecting me. That's how Justin Fields feels. Because that's yeah. how I feel. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's the situation. Because I've seen no calls, same officials, no calls for me, and a lesser hit being given to somebody else, and you call that? That's what makes me frustrated. So that's highly questionable. And we're going to go to the next clip. So, man, I don't know how you feel if the national anthem gets you in the mood, but it definitely got them in the mood. Is it all the way in the dookie shoot? It look like it's in the shoot, dog. Bruh. <laughs> not to put the, not, not to, to act like you got some class about yourself. It, take your hand out and put the shirt back down. Nah, it, it's, it's, the, it's the gracious love. Slap at the end. Ah. It's like, okay, cool. Her hands may have been cold though, you know. Uh, bruh. It's a hockey is that a hockey match? Yes, the hockey match. Keep that camera on her now. She'll be a bad motherfucker if she <laughs> at some point in her in that <laughs> game where she just like, yay. No, <sighs> ah. I'm I'm about to pound everybody. Look. Uh. <laughs> Look, bro. <laughs> Golly. Auntie wanted to smell some dingo berries. I That's mean. <laughs> She want some of her shit's going on. I'm, like, dude just standing there like. He there, bro. He there. He, he, he it's committed. Happening. It's going it's down. It's happening. Yes. <laughs> Damn. Shit, it is what it is, bro. Wash your hands, people. Please. Hand sanitizer, too. Look. All right, next one up, man. We have Adam Thielen. Man, he said he had some Super Bowl visions about coming to Carolina okay. before he got there. Um, so let's see what he got to say. So Adam, you know, the video is making the rounds. You said that the plans changed. Obviously, uh, with Frank being let go, this season has not mapped out to what you thought it would be. How Can you share how that plan has changed and what that means? I know it's, it's super early. Yeah. Whistle just blew, game just ended, but um, what, what was that plan and what was the vision for you like coming into here? And what does this mean for Adam Thielen beyond yeah, the season? Yeah, well, um, you know, now that the season's over, I can kind of elaborate a little bit on it. But um, I think initially the, the plan is, and, and this is life, but the plan was to come here, make a difference, have a chance at, you know, making the playoffs, win the division, and then, you know, building off that with the rookie quarterback and going into year two with, you know, hopefully the same staff and everybody together that, you know, building off a division title or playoff berth this year and then hopefully a run at a Super Bowl. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of years left, so having an opportunity at Super Bowl was kind of my vision. Um, so when I said, you know, plans have changed, well, we didn't make the playoffs. We didn't even have a chance in the playoffs. So um, that vision is a little different now. With that being said, I'm super excited about what the future holds. holds. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of things that got to play out. Um, but I believe in this locker room. Um, so before you, you tap in, we got a few tweets because they killed them online about this because they, you know, splash and furious. No way you thought the Panthers were a Super Bowl caliber team. Teeves McGeeves, so sad to see him come up just short. <laughs> Signed with a team that had a 5'10 rookie quarterback that had a 7-10 and year before, no legitimate thought the Panthers were a real contender. Taking a huge paycheck and then acting disappointed that you didn't win at a high level is pretty sad. Man, what's your thoughts, man? I ain't going to pile up on, you know, Adam Thielen because I'm a fan of his craft, right? Mm -hmm. Very crafty possession receiver that can't impact the game. He hit a thousand yards this year, in too. In a major way. So, cite the source first. He did as much as he possibly could, given the circumstances. But, Adam, you in a fucked up situation, bro. There ain't no other way to put it. Yeah. Like, let's just call a spade a spade. I don't and have a fucking, you just fired your GM. You don't Damn. know who the GM's going to be. Damn. You, you, you fired your head coach. Damn. Y'all was playing with makeshift coaches, and it's just, you got owners throwing cups and drinks. Damn. It's a fucked up situation. And we haven't seen a lot of times in sports where you go from worst to first without a process happening. Mm -hmm. It wasn't too many things where... <laughs> the fans have hope going into the offseason. And that's that's what people aren't getting, or that's what upper management is not getting in Carolina. 
It's like, bro, these people who are keeping you in business, keeping the lights on, they ain't even, they don't got no hope. You traded away all your damn picks. What? That you, that you, like you had a lot of picks. The Christian McCaffrey trade rendered you a lot. Mm -hmm. All right. And you don't got shit to show for it. So until somebody takes accountability and say like, yo, I I fucked fucked up. up. Because yeah. now you got a guy in Alan Thielen who is trying to win. He now. came there to win yesterday, mm-hmm. and it's disheartening. Yeah. So, yeah, he's excited what the future holds, and he hopes that, shit, somebody who comes through that locker room in a superior role, coach, executive leader, they get the the sense of urgency that, motherfucker, we're trying to win, bro. Yes, sir. And we we have winning at its forefront as that's the only thing that fuck pride fuck ego fuck, man we bringing people in here to win mm-hmm. we don't have nobody wants to hear this especially not a veteran player they never want to hear this is a rebuilding year yeah. the fuck want to hear that shit i'm trying to win now hello like what are we talking about here so do you throw in a guy who had ambition to come into a locker room to get to the to the postseason no so all these tweets it's easy for people to say it now. And, but the realization, it hit home after probably week seven. It's like, fuck, we're screwed. <laughs> it's not looking right, bro. You know what I'm saying? So he knows that. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is, it ain't nothing that Adam Thielen or nobody on that roster could do if the person who's superior to you don't have the same vision that you that They you don't have. get it. Because the same situation... Houston Texans could have said the same thing. For sure. And now they bowling. For sure. You know what I'm saying? For rookie, sure. Rookie, rookie coach, rookie quarterback. Everything rookie. And they still fucking winning. And they no. playing games like it's rookie mode. Like, come on now. Come on. So now, I, I it's my fellow Americans, <laughs> I come before you again, humbly, as I know how, to, let's put me away for a second. Let me just give you some free game, Carolina Panthers. Get somebody in there that know what they're doing. Get somebody in there that has a track record of winning. That's not going to bullshit and, and not hold people accountable to what the expectations is. The truth of the matter is, for a long time and still to date, the Carolina Panthers does not have an identity. I don't know what the fuck, like when I'm watching them. Oh, shit, Bryce about to go off. Or shit, bro, Adam Thielen about to go off. Oh, bro, that's a stingy ass defense. I don't know what the fuck the Carolina Panthers are right mm-hmm. now. And until they create an identity from top to bottom, this is what we're going to do. Similar to, you know, we've seen the teams create identities. Mm -hmm. The Baltimore Ravens created an identity. It wasn't sexy to to go and stick with Lamar Jackson, but shit, that's their identity. Tough, hard-nosed defense, as well as a crafty, very exotic run game. That's their identity. You're not going to win consistently in this league when you just flipping the ball, flipping the coin up in the air and see like, shit, let's see what we got. Mm. All right, shit, cool. It's not going to work, bro. Yeah. This is the National Football League, football at its highest point. And until you get somebody in there that understands the, the sense of urgency that needs to be had, mm-hmm. going into the offseason, going into the draft, going into training camp, going into preseason, Going into the regular season and even in the playoffs, it's not just a, a flip that you could just cut on and say, "All right, fellas, shit, it's week five now. Let's let, let's cut it up." Like, no, hell yeah. no, hell no. We need guys that's coming in from day one knowing like what their role and responsibility is, and we need leaders yeah. to create number one first our identity as a franchise. Because right now, for the last five, six, seven years, we've been scrambling to find that, and there's been guys who's tried to create an identity that was not suitable to do that. But do you think he was sold a dream? Like, even with your second tenure at Carolina, Mm -hmm. like, was you sold a dream or or a level of expectation of what you thought was going to happen for you to even go back there? Yeah, but that shit changed when the fucking officer coordinator gets fired the second week I'm there. That shit changed when I'm realizing that certain things of order of operations that's supposed to happen aren't happening. Yeah. We're not practicing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We off? For Christmas Eve, fuck this is it's Christmas Eve, but we still got a game. Yeah, coming up. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are we really doing? Yeah, like practice the the intensity and practice. Motherfuckers cold walking around and they like, no, nah, fuck that, bro. We here to practice, bro. We trying to win, dog. Yeah. And until that is the standard where 
it ain't, oh my God, it's cold out here. It's like, no, bro, we got to work. By that time you came back from New England, you talking about cold. Cold. This shit, this ain't, shit cold. ain't cold. This is summer day in motherfucking <laughs> Massachusetts. You see what I'm saying? Y'all bullshitting. We yeah. ain't even tackling. We ain't even working on our our fundamentals. Yeah. So until you get a guy that's in there that has a non-negotiable of of this is how we doing it, and this is what my track record say. We don't need no more projects or no lab rats to, or, or or no you know. Hey, let's just see how this works. Like he's quality. Like no, bro. You need somebody who know what the fuck for sure. For sure. The fans need it. They're owed that. Yeah. So when they pay their 45 cents, I don't give a damn what they cost for a damn ticket to Carolina. I was used to seeing that stadium be excited when I was playing. So therefore, they, they ain't have nothing to be excited for. Yeah. So much shuffling and this and that and the third. It's like, bro, get somebody in there that know what the fuck they damn doing. Mm-hmm. Simple. Next clip. And last question of a call of the week. This is how you avoid ah, yeah, I see <laughs> roughing the kick. This was on the punt. Braden Mann is oh, getting rushed gotcha, there. Gotcha. Hold on, hold on. It looks like he wants to do They're it. trying to fall. He's trying to fall. Cam hold on. Brown, am I going to do it? Am I going to do it? What? Am I? Maybe? Cam Brown's like, no, no, no. You are not flopping on my watch. A nice moment there. I just wonder, Brian. Bro, trying to fall out. Well, dear mm. punter, who was supposed to flop, come on down here to College Park. I'm going to teach you how to finesse. I'm going to teach you how to jug. I'm going to teach you how to, you know what I'm saying, to get some weird about yourself. Because, motherfucker, I would have been laid the fuck out. Off the touch. I mean, bro. Take me to the king. I don't have much to give. <laughs> I would have been out. My neck. My back. My neck and my, my back. My neck and my back. Right, bro. I would have been like a, a squirming fish. His name is Brayden Man. <laughs> Brayden. Come on down here, bro. I put on a class, a, a master class of finesse. Brought to you by yours true. Next step. Here we go. Third down. Uh, Cam approved, or as I would like to call it, Boogie approved. Let's see what we got. You ready? All right. Tyrod Taylor. First up. Motherfucker look like he walking down the runway. Like, hey, damn. I ain't gonna lie. I'm like, damn, man, fashion week. The stiff ass walk. Loosen yeah, up, my boy. Yeah, yeah, but damn, <laughs> he don't got no bag, no wallet, uh, no. I, no accessories. Fuck it, shit. He knows something I don't know. <laughs> shit, they, they won, so. Shit. Fuck that bag. <laughs> you got that bag. It's all about the swag. You just, you just <laughs> I wouldn't expect anything less. He in New York. He got access to a lot of hot fashion shit. But Tyrod been a fly guy. Yeah, he been doing that for a, a, you know a long saying? time. He been doing it for a, a long, long time. time. Like, yeah. With the neon pants, yeah. like that's 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 fly. Yeah. That's that's approved right there. I can dig that. <laughs> Next clip, bro. We got Kyler Murray. What you think? Does he do got the yeah. accessory though? Yeah. Louis. This the new print that uh, Pharrell came out with for Louis Vuitton. What kind of bag that is? It's the Louis Vuitton like uh, box. Oh, for real? Oh, um, clutch drum. Yeah, that hoe hard. He ain't even holding it right. It's yeah. Handle on that bitch. It is. He just got it in his arm. Like. Uh, I'm gonna go get me one of them. Yeah. I like that collar. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what them shoes talking about though, but you probably like when you doing all those accessories, you ain't got to go crazy with the shoes because mm-hmm. you don't want to take, you don't want to take attention off the accessories. You feel me? Tie, okay. untucked shirt. You know what I'm saying? Coat, all that. You yeah. feel me? Even with the beanie, got like the punk rockish skateboarder vibe with mm-hmm. the, you know, the ultra, uh, baggy. Yeah. You know what I mean, I like that. Cool. So let's go back to your boy, El Travador. No video, just a photo of this man. Straight off the plane. Let's, let's let's get into the details. Bro, respectfully, I mean uh, he can a little hit of yellow at the like, bottom with the shoe. That's some that's some <laughs> real spill right there. But when you going home to what you going home to, bit bro, that's a flex in this set. That motherfucker could have wore a white tee and some damn. Blue jeans. Some flip flops. And some, and some fucking <laughs> Debo flip flops. You know what I mean? It's like, bro, I, with a shirt that says, I can't wait to go home. <laughs> Golly. 
How about sand to the beach? Cause the beach is better. Come on now. Nah. You could bring your chick, but your chick would ooh. Oh yeah. That's definitely boogie approved right there, man. Here we go. Fourth down. Wholesome moment of the week. As I like to call it one finger, one pinky, one thumb, the one love award. Who we got? None other than CJ Stroud. Yeah. Let's see what he's talking about. Young man, young man, young man. Welcome to the playoffs. How does that sound to you? Man, it's a blessing. I can't do nothing but just thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, man. I'm sorry. I put a lot of work in. My team has. Everybody counted us out from the, from the start. So, man, it's just special to see the city of Houston just on the come up again. And um, I'm just blessed enough to be the vessel that, that Christ picked to, to lead this great franchise. Yeah. So I can do nothing but just thank the Lord. Yeah, that's for sure. Because not even me. Like, let me hold myself again. Yeah. I didn't believe in their ass. Like, Texans? Shit, it was going to take about two or three years. For them to get it right. You know what I'm saying? But shit, they done figured, they got their guy. They got their trigger man. Yeah. And they balling, too. Yeah. They selling out for them. They are. That motherfucker had some throws, bro, where it was just like. For real? Damn. And when it's time for him to make plays, he's making plays. He's giving guys opportunities. And that's all you can ask for. And you don't have that excuse no more to say, oh, he young. Like, this guy came in defying all odds that was posed against him. Coaches, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because like, they was knocking him off the IQ test when he was coming in and saying. That shit ain't fucking football. Like, stop uh, doing that shit. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, let's keep the main thing the main thing. Can you play or not? <laughs> At the end Line of the day. Up. Like, shit, I don't know two plus two, but I know how to embarrass you. <laughs> Be like, oh, shit, we want a very smart player. You don't want no fucking smart player. You want a good football player. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Be smart on the field. Yeah, like, come on, bro. CJ Stroud, bro, I'm extremely proud of your ability to, to come into it, to a league, and really get everybody's attention. He did. Uh, is it is it over with for him? Nah, because the playoffs brings a different type of speed, energy, and competitiveness where every play counts. It ain't no more semi-sold out. Yeah. Like this shit. Every it's, game count. It's the last from one. from fucking warm-ups, pre-game, to it's a different type of energy, bro. Yeah. And you gotta be ready to rock and roll. But needless to say, like CJ, bro, you've you, you've conquered a lot, and it and it's it's not that you did it. Keep doing what you're doing, mm -hmm. because a lot of people are taking notice. You're setting the bar, <laughs> like game changer. Okay, people are going into the draft saying, "Oh, I gotta find me another CJ Stroud." Facts. That's what a game changer is. Mm. Feel me? So yeah, big ups to you, and the one love award goes to CJ Stroud and the Houston Texans. Yeah. So congratulations. We got one more submission in here for the one love. Your boy Derrick Henry, the final farewell. We got a couple of videos in regards to him. Titan fans, I just want to say thank you for the greatest eight years of my life, the ups and the downs. Y'all been there for everything, through the adversity. Watch me grow as a person and a player, always supporting me. Um, I love y'all. I love seeing the 22s in the stadium. Hopefully I was an inspiration to all the young kids and everybody in the community. Just thank y'all so much. Man, God is good. And tighten up, baby. Nothing left to be said. Ladies and gentlemen, Henry, Henry, I'm slightly confused here. This should be a questionable call. Because <clears throat> we're not guaranteed that he's going to leave. Also, we got one more video. Everybody was waiting for him to leave or whatever after the game. Like, they stayed after the game to get him signed. Why, why is he not coming back? <clears throat> I don't know. I don't even think it's set in stone that he's not. But, no. I mean, from the sentiments of this, seems like. What the fuck was that? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Like That's quite, that's that more questionable. Hard, that's than, a questionable call. Like, what, yeah. is he retiring? Is he, is he, is this the last year of his contract? I think this is, this is I believe, the last year of his contract. Well, Tennessee, uh, let me say this. You'll be a fool to let that dude go. Straight up. Because it ain't a lot of Derrick Henry's that's walking around 
out there. But we know the demise of the the running back position. But shit, if he come available, he ain't going to be on that option block for, for too many times or too much longer. So if the Tennessee Titans let this dude go. Yeah, he expires at the end of the season. Pay the man because that's their identity. Wherever, wherever Derrick Henry goes, he will be a part of that physicality. But do you even think it's a situation that he doesn't want to come back? He, he want to win. Yeah. Look at his track. Bro, he's the all-time leading rusher in high school football in the state of Florida. He's won. He went to Alabama, won a Heisman Trophy, mm-hmm. national champion. He's ready to win. Yeah. Do you, did you fault him for that? What would you place him? What team? If he could go anywhere, money didn't matter. Man, build around that guy, bro. Like, you don't need a, 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 a like an elite quarterback with Derrick Henry. You need some elite linemen. You feel me? Take him to the Carolina Panthers. Mm. <laughs> nah, I ain't saying that, bro. <laughs> if I'm a spokesman for Derrick Henry, I would want to go there. Unless you have an, an invested offensive line. But if you had a Henry, you quarterback Henry in your backfield. I damn near did. Yeah. Jonathan Stewart. Mm-hmm. D'Angelo Williams. Hard-nosed runner. Yeah. Shit, Christian McCaffrey. Mm-hmm. Hard-nosed runner. Like, I have some good running backs now. You feel me? And I know what a, 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 a sustainable run game can do versus, you know, defenders. Yeah. You just need guys that's going to not let they guy make the tackle. Yeah. But they was like, I mean, they got... Uh... Listen to me, man. <laughs> Listen to me. All that tighten up and rah-rah. Tennessee Titans, general manager, president, owner. If y'all let this dude leave, it would be a mistake. Yeah. Straight yeah. up. So, Newton's Law, main segment. We've all seen Arthur Smith didn't like, or is very irate, that's the word, irate, that they scored a touchdown with seconds or minutes left in the game. Yeah. Yeah, like he wanted to get like them hockey uh, players. That's cool. <laughs> but shit, bro, whether, whether you're losing 17 to 41, you're getting your ass beat. It is what it is. You shouldn't have let it happen. You play to win the game. Say it one more time. You play to win the game. And there's been a person who said it in his career, very wise person at that. If mm-hmm. you don't like me celebrating or if you don't like me scoring or like the person scoring, don't let him in there. Straight up. But to 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 have this type of energy, play the clip. <clears throat> Career. Oh, and Arthur Smith's hot that Dennis Allen scored a touchdown at the end. Bunch of chest bumps. Yeah. He said, what are you doing? And he's going at Dennis Allen. Ain't nobody holding you back. Yeah, you could have got all the smoke you wanted. Don't walk over there fast if you ain't doing shit. Yeah, fuck the yeah. ass. Listen. Hold on, we got one more clip. Do you think we, we regret that? Well, you do have to play these guys twice a year. That's all I'm saying. Who gives a fuck? We, we already played them twice. I know, but I'm telling you. Know, somebody has got to play these guys. Who cares? That's all. They got to play us twice. How you feel about it? Tell me how you feel about it. Not good. Why don't you he ain't never played football. These guys twice a year. Who cares? They got to play us twice. <laughs> That's cool. It's easy for you to have your opinion when you just holding the recorder. All right. Press pause. Hold on, we got one more. Look. Just Jimmy Graham. So everybody was hitting him on Twitter. And then also even Shannon Sharp said they should cut Jameis. Um because of that play, do you agree? And then, so, in that play, Jamal Williams uh, was a leader in the locker room, but he had zero touchdowns for the season. So, with that play with Jameis passing him off, he got him a touchdown. Um, and he had 17 last season that led the NFL. But Jimmy Graham said, get off of Jameis' back. This man is the best teammate I've ever had. Loves the city. This game, and th- loves the city. This game and embodies everything you can for in a leader uh, was a rare situation and we all take responsibility nobody thought it would get this blown out of proportion also fuck the Falcons so I mean I mean cause the coach I don't think the coach wanted him to call that play but he auto built and did got his guy in there so first off this is the person who has 
not Jimmy Graham. I'm talking about the reporter who is who is had everything to say to Jameis. Um, this is a person who I don't even know his name. I could care less. But he, can, I will ask this to that person, mm-hmm. to that reporter: Is there a right way to win, and and is there a right way to lose? Correct. Like, there's not a book on like no blowouts. Like, do they cut the lose. scoreboard? Do they cut the scoreboard this, off? This is how you, you lose. Exactly. No, and this mm-hmm. is how you win. There's no books that's on the market that states that. And the, for the ones that do, they can try, but it's still going to be subjective. Mm-hmm. Bro, it is what it is. And if it was wrong, he would have got fined for it. Hey, bro. The offensive job is to do what? Score. The defensive job is to do what? Stop them from scoring. Okay, cool. But it is, like, I I, I can't agree with with, with Shannon Sharp here, bro. Like, if anybody, like, this is where the players who has played has to step in. Was it controversial? (laughs) Yes. But to lose your job for doing your job? Like, it's my job to put up points. I don't give a damn if it's the last second or not. It's almost like, shoot, basketball players when they dribbling it out. Yeah, yeah. And then somebody try to shoot a pass or we seen Lance Stevenson clip. Like, yeah. you can't get mad at him. The game's still going. The, st- the game's still going. What happened to this quote? Play to the last whistle. Uh-huh. So what happened to that? You can't just sit up here and throw on this man because, boom, the game was 41 to 17 at that particular point in time. A blowout. Then let's not, he fired. Hello? Goodbye. So, so you fighting. You, you, I guess you, I mean, you fighting the guy home there and say, hey, bro. Bro, you was fired. And regardless. Like, come on. Damn, you should have fought the gym. That's what you should have been fighting. Then the dude going to say, Shh, you got to play them twice a year. No, that's. They gotta play us twice a year, and they know what type of time we on. So shit, we set the we set the bar. Yeah. We don't like them. They don't like us. Shit, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. It is what it is. It is dog. what it is, bro. Stand on that. So don't just sit up here and tell me that that's classless or that's this, that's that. I'm doing my job as a quarterback, as an offensive player. It's our job to score points, and that's yeah. what I did. And if you're going to uh, cut me for doing my job, I don't give a damn if it was in the last minute, the last seconds, and then somebody will probably say, I can already hear it now. That's why I can't. I mean, do- I really want to tell you, fuck you. That's what I really want to tell you. And that's what I'm going to tell you, fuck you. But my job as an offensive player is to, is to put up points. And yeah. as a defender, if you don't like that shit, don't Stop let me it. score. But you can't get mad at Jameis for doing that shit. Mm-hmm. At any point like, in the hell game. No. Hell no, hell no, hell no. So not only that, we're always talking about good teammates. If if we we love those uh, storylines of great teammates. Mm-hmm. This man said, bro, last year this man had 17 touchdowns. Ain't, this year he had none. Yeah. Go on, get in the box. He's a then. leader. He's a spe- This is how you <clears throat> throw guys bones. Like, here, bro, man, appreciate you, bro. Go on and let us celebrate with you. Everybody was celebrating. Yeah. Play that clip. And the thing is, I don't care about the other team. I'm doing this for my team. Bro, it's all, it's us versus them. It's us against everybody. 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 So y'all could take that storyline and shove it up your ass because the truth of the matter is, bro, I don't see nothing wrong with it. Mm-hmm. And anybody who has played this game, they should know the same thing. It's hard to win in this league, and you're not about to sit up here and tell me that there's a right way and a wrong way to winning or losing. There's you either lose or you win. Yeah. And if you don't like me winning, stop me from winning. Yeah. So then, like, even because you've been had that statement, even with your the dabbing mm-hmm. and the dancing, it's like people didn't want you. Cam, you need to stop celebrating. Well, stop me from scoring. Stop me from doing that, bro. It's simple. Yeah. Stop me from doing that. But did your teammates have a problem with it? Cause that mean I scored, huh, big dog? Come on. Steve Smith has this line that says, if you see this face, that means I score. <laughs> if you see this face again, that means I scored again. Like this, it's the entertainment of the game, bro. Yeah. We can't be, we can't be hypocritical here. Now, did they need to score at that point in time? No, but they did. Shit, you're right. So w- what are we really talking about here? And the reporter has every nerve to say like, oh, you got to face them twice a year. Duh, dumbass. They in our division. We always do. You feel me? And, and it's, it's, it's fuck them type of energy. Yeah. So you get mad at me because I'm showing love to one of my teammates who ain't been in the end zone as much as he once was. Mm-hmm. A guy who has helped this team win multiple times. This is our way of giving him an appreciation token. 
Yeah. So, yeah, I'm standing on that, bro. Like, don't do that. Don't do that. Because had I not scored the 48 points or 47 points or the 40 points, however many points, then y'all would have talked about that. Yeah, exactly. So you mad at me for scoring? Too like, many points? Too many points? Or scoring when I did score? Yeah. If that was the case, there should be a time in the game where it's like, you cannot score. It wasn't. It was still time on the clock. And then to that point, play to the final whistle. And mm-hmm. that's what they did. Cool. Some would say, too, like, why would you get in the victory formation to do that shit? Man, look, bro. It's all type of different formations. When Andy Reid get in this funky little <laughs> formations. And the circle around you know, and all that. When we seen Dan Marino and Ben Roethlisberger do the fake spike. And then mm-hmm. they th- what are we talking about, bro? What they say in the boxing ring? The all, protect yourself at all times. Come on. I'm coming. Feel me. So in that in that way, it's like, bro, it is what it is. Yeah. Cool. This man had a valid point to say, look, whether the coach told the victory formation or not, the the great teams are led by the leaders in that locker room. Mm-hmm. When the leaders say, hey, bro, no, nah, we doing this or we doing that, let's go about it. All right, cool. Do it. You, like We're arguing about an offensive uh, a unit for scoring points. Come on. That's my point, bro. Cool, man. We about to go through the playoff preview. <clears throat> I'm going to say the game, and you give me the name, all right? Who do you like for the games of the weekend? All right, Saturday, we got the Browns at the Texans. Who you going with? Texans. All right, Dolphins at the Chiefs. Chiefs. All right, you got Sunday, Steelers at the Bills. Bills. All right, Packers at the Cowboys. Cowboys. Rams at the Lions. Lions. And then Monday, Eagles at the Bucks. Eagles playing in Tampa Bay. Eagles at the Bucks? I know. All right. Eagles. Okay. Then we got <clears throat> who you got coming out the AFC? Super Bowl prediction. Who 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 your Super Bowl matchup out of the playoffs? 49ers and the um and the Ravens. And so who winning that? The Ravens. Ravens all the way. Golly. Okay. But that's tough. 49ers, Ravens. Ravens victory. Super Bowl champ. So you Lamar, I'm locked in. I, I, this is this is the question. Like my Super Bowl preview, um, my heart wants to go with Lamar. Mm-hmm. But I think the schematics behind it, that makes me recant that. I think the 49ers. Yeah. They got some weapons, bro. They heavy. Purdy? They heavy, yes. Debo. Christian. And who else? Shoot, they got a <laughs> they lot. They got of, a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't they you say that. Like, they got right. a lot of talent there. Offensive and defense. Yeah. So. And, and, bro. They complete, bro. They stack now. And, and let's go back to the first matchup with the Ravens and the 49ers. Mm-hmm. They didn't lose because, you know, well, they did get outplayed. They didn't protect the football. Mm-hmm. Like Brock had multiple interceptions. You know, the defense was active, and I think they have a plan going into the next matchup if that matchup presents itself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They didn't give George Kittle <clears throat> enough passes and opportunities because, shit, that was the matchup right there. But yeah. I know going into it, like my heart says, oh, man, this Lamar year, cool, which is the MVP favorite. But Kyle Shanahan... I think he dials it up, and I, I got the 49ers winning the Super Bowl. All right. Yeah! The moment that we all been waiting for. Shit. My regular season record has been uh, overall, well, first off, week 18 record was 2-1. and one. Mm-hmm. All right. The Bills and the Dolphins, that's the only loss that I took. Uh, we all know that the Bills won. Uh, Buccaneers handle business at Carolina. Uh, Texans beat the Colts at home or at the Colts. So my overall record is 31 and 20 with some very, mm, you know, skeptical picks, but it could have went, you know, either way. So that concludes my regular season. And I finished very average 31 and 20. Now, this is where the real football takes place. And 
Uh, these picks moving forward will be brought to you by Prize Picks. And if you guys don't know how Prize Picks works, it's simple. It's basically skill based, real money daily fantasy sports game. All right. How does this work? You select two or more players and you predict if they will have more or less than their stat projections for the game. What I love is that it's just not football. You can play across any sport you watch. But for the rest of the playoffs, we'll be doing NFL picks. So just download the Prize Picks app, make your picks, and submit your entry. It takes less than 60 seconds to play. If you're a new user, make sure you use the code ACEBOOGIE. That's A C E B O O G I E, ACEBOOGIE, for a first deposit match up to $100. So, as my constituent would say, Let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. And I will simply say, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. So, Peggy. All right, let's get into it. So, C.D. Lamb, first up, is projected to have 98.5 receiving yards at home versus the Packers. Are you going more or less than 98.5? Mm. Yes. Because. Uh, and when I think about this pick, it's, it's, it's simple. The Cowboys have to find ways to feature their players. It's 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 simple. Dak Prescott has to do his job. Mm -hmm. uh, CeeDee Lamb has to do his job. Micah Parson has to do his job. The playoffs is 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 for players doing their job at a high level. This is when it really counts. So yes, I do believe C D Lamb will get more than 99 yards. Yeah, because he's been averaging 102. Yeah. And then like 119 at home. So, yeah. and they playing. They playing at, at home. home. Homegrown. Like, it ain't no weather. It ain't no issues. Get that guy the ball, bro. Yeah. And they going to get him. They, they have to. Even though I know, you know, Jair on the other side. Yeah. They're going to have to do a good job of moving him around. Mm -hmm. You can't just go on the days where you just have a featured receiver stuck in the same spot. You got to yeah. move them. Yeah. Motions, uh, different formations, inside, outside, all that. And I think the Dallas Cowboys have will have a, a good plan going into the game versus the Green Bay Packers. Well, and speaking of getting CeeDee Lamb the ball, the person that's passing a rock, man, Dak Prescott. It's projected to have 281.5 passing yards at home again versus the Packers. Is he going more or less? But before you answer, Dak averages 265.6 passing yards um, this season, and he's over 300 yards at passing at home. More or less for Dak, passing 281. 281.5. Yes, Dacky. Yeah, more. <laughs> they, I th bro, this is a this is a must win for Dallas. This is the Dallas Cowboys team mm -hmm. that will catch a lot of flack. They already catch a lot of flack. Yeah, and I'm banking on them to live up to what the expectation dictates them to live up to. Mm -hmm. And he has a hell of a game. So, so we yes, he has more than 281. All right. Bold statement, but shit, it's Dallas at home, bro. Don't go against them. Go big or go home. Go Prize big pitch, or go home. And we all know Jerry Jones. Uh-huh. He ain't going to be bullied. It ain't going to be a nice Jerry. <laughs> okay. If they lose his damn game. Come on now. So. Last one up. Young Gun, CJ Stroud, is projected to have 256.5 passing yards, more or less. But before you answer... CJ averages 273 passing yards uh, this season. And at uh, home, he averages 310.8. So, Cam, CJ, 256 passing yards, more or less. What you got? Even though I'm, I'm picking him to win, I don't think he has uh, more than 256. Just, I want him to. Mm -hmm. I want him to. But if I'm making my prize pick, Mm -hmm. No. Nah. You think they'll keep the ball more out of his yeah. hands because the rookie? playoffs is a, is 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 a is a runner's game. Mm -hmm. Ball control. You feel me? Time of possession. I'm thinking like time. Of, yeah, time of possession. Very manageable throws. Um, I don't see them getting desperate. Two twenty. You know what I'm saying? Let's get them comfortable. 
You know what I mean? So, nah, less. Okay. For sure. So, I have CD Lamb is projected to have uh, 98.5 or uh, 99 receiving yards. Uh, so, that's a more. Uh, Dak Prescott is projected to have uh, 282 yards passing at home versus the Packers. I'm going to say more. But, okay. All right, I see. But if he get 281, then I lost that bet. Mm-hmm. Fuck it. I'm standing on business. 282, we going through. Yeah, dig what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, and then CJ Stroud is projected to have 257 passing yards. Uh, less. All right. Yeah, less. So, those are my picks. And if you're feeling a little froggy, shit, take your ass on down the prize picks and insert your picks. It's simple. It doesn't take no time at all. And with that being said, shit, let's see what we do. Don't forget to use the promo code Ace Boogie once again. I'm also putting these in as a power play for a hundred dollars. That means if I hit all three correctly, I win 500 big ones. Money, no, 500 money, dollars. money, money. Not 500,000. <laughs> Feel me? Because I, see, I seen Tussie, bro. We might have made history tonight for the biggest smack in prize picks history. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Oh, the no, look at that. Nigga. That's, he been doing that for real? Tootsie is up. Shit. They say Tootsie oh, is up. Yeah. Money, 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 money. <coughs> money. Damn. <laughs> shit, that motherfucker give me hope. He got his I eyes on the prize. On the big prize. And that prize happens to be prize picks. Strap on in. It's wild card weekend, baby. Man, it's a whole different type of energy and buzz that goes into these type of games. Every snap, every play counts. And, uh, yeah. It's in. And that's it for this week's episode of 4th and 1. Make sure you tune in each and every week, each and every Wednesday. And need I remind you, 4th and 1 is powered by Iconic Saga. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you comment, and most of all, make sure you subscribe. And catch this great content for the masses only on my YouTube channel. And always with love. Always with love. One finger, one pinky, one thumb. One love.